In the studio now for our Your Health segment tonight is Dr. Madeline Dick Biasquechea, Clinical Assistant Professor of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Sciences at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and Director of Urogynecology and Pelvic Reconstruction at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thank you. We're here to talk about something that's very common, mm -hmm. uh, can be very painful, and is little discussed, UTIs. Mm -hmm. What is that? UTI stands for urinary tract infections. It's an infection somewhere in the urinary tract, including the kidneys, ureters, bladder, or the urethra. How, how common is it? Are there numbers? Is it more women or men? It accounts to about seven to eight million visits to the office every year um, and 100,000 admissions to the hospital a year. So it's very common. It is twice as common in women than in men. How, how does it typically happen? I mean, obviously, you know, you have an opening in the body and, mm -hmm. and bacteria can get in. Is that that's what happens? Basically, um, bacteria can come from the perineum or the area of the uh, genitals or rectum, um, and then it invades through the urethra into the bladder. How does somebody know they have one? What's the first symptom? So symptoms can include uh, urinary frequency, going more than usual to the bathroom, urgency, having to go very quickly to the bathroom and feeling a very uh, uncomfortable burning sensation when you urinate. Um, they can also have a pain in the lower abdomen. Some people can have a fever and some can even have blood in the urine. Is pain the, the first symptom? It can be anything. Some people have more urgency and frequency and some people have more pain. It, it, every person is different. It sounds like one of those things where getting medical attention quickly <laughs> is a good idea, but, but it may not be clear to everybody what's going on initially. So most people, if you're healthy and you increase your uh, fluid intake and the symptoms are not too uh, severe, you can probably clear it on your own. Um, but if the symptoms are severe or they persist for more than three or four days, um, you should definitely go to the doctor. And especially the first or second time it happens, you want to go to the doctor very quickly because it's very uncomfortable. Everybody makes the, the, the same association when, when I saw on the notes, what we were talking about, my mm -hmm. first thought was cranberry juice. Yes. Is there anything, is there anything to that as, as a cure or preventative for UTIs? So there are a number of things that uh, we use for prevention. Unfortunately, we don't have a great amount of research on this uh, yet, and some other research is contradictory. But I also, I always tell my patients to you know, try everything. <laughs> so I don't usually recommend cranberry juice because it has a lot of calories and you don't want all that extra sugar. So cranberry tablets, uh, there's also uh, increasing the fluid intake, um, urinating right after intercourse. And for some women that have recurrent urinary tract infections, meaning that they have more than two in six months or more than three in a year, um, we also may give uh, antibiotics to take every day for prevention. Preventatively? Mm -hmm. Or what we call prophylactic. What, what would the risk factors be in, in men for this? For, um, unfortunately, I see mostly women, right. <laughs> but older mm -hmm. men that can have um, prostatitis or an infection of the prostate can, and show up with urinary tract infections, um, and anything that could uh, potentially place bacteria that is in the skin or in the rectum uh, in the urethra. Is this the sort of thing where we're generally staying reasonably hydrated, mm -hmm. drinking a, a, a good amount, not a crazy amount of water is, is a, a good idea for everybody? Yes, definitely. Um, almost uh, two liters of water a day is uh, plenty. Um, 
making sure you have a good hygiene, especially in women, wiping front to back is very important. Um, so you don't bring the bacteria that's in the rectum towards the vagina or the urethra. Um, and having, in general, a good, a healthy lifestyle. Let's uh, take a phone call. Baltimore County, this is Erica. Thank you for the call. Go ahead. Uh, I'm interested if there is anything in herbs, natural uh, plants to take. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for the phone call. Natural therapies? Um, like I said, cranberry tablets are good. There's a supplement that's called D manos. It's a type of sugar, and it, you can find it as a, a, one of the supplements in the pharmacy. Um, that has been also uh, in some studies shown to prevent recurrent urinary tract infections. Um, but that's basically... If, if an infection is allowed to continue mm -hmm. without, without treatment, what are the potential consequences? So certain patients are more at risk of complications during a urinary tract infections. Um, patients that are immunosuppressed uh, because they're taking certain medications. Uh, pregnant women, older uh, patients uh, might get then ascending infections, what we call infections that go up from the bladder towards the kidneys. And, um, and that can present a dangerous situation because the infection can go into the blood. Let's take a call from uh, Harford County. This is Joe. Joe, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, 67 year old male, been diagnosed with a distended bladder. Um, been told I don't completely void my bladder. I'm wondering what are the complications or side effects of that malady? All right, thank you for the, the phone call. Good luck. You don't treat a lot of men, but... No, but urinary tension can also uh, happen in women, but well, both women and men with urinary tension can be more at risk of urinary tract infections because there's more of a volume of fluid that doesn't release all the time, and bacteria can then um, reproduce. It's, it's more of a favorable environment for bacteria to grow. With women in particular, do, does it matter uh, if you or somebody who takes showers or takes baths uh, and, and feminine hygiene products? So uh, our, women, our bodies uh, as women uh, are very good at cleaning themselves. So we um, don't need any feminine hygiene products. We just need uh, showers and um, soap and water is a great thing. If you do do baths and you find that you are having more urinary or vaginal infections, then that should be one thing that you eliminate first. <laughs> How does somebody know when to see the doctor, mm -hmm. and and once you've seen maybe a, a family doctor, when mm -hmm. when you need a specialist? Well, if the symptoms are very severe, if they have, uh, if you can't do your regular daily routine, if they have been going on for three or four days and they are not improving, if you have blood in your urine or you have a fever, and if, they're, if, if it's an elderly person and they uh, show signs of confusion, those are all signs that you should be seeing a doctor, um, either family physician or urgent center. Um, if a patient has repeated urinary tract infections, again, more than three in a year or more than two in six months, they should be um, treated as recurrent urinary tract infections and they can be seen by a specialist such as myself as a urogynecologist or a urologist to determine if they have certain risk factors that we can intervene with. Is there any research going on that, that's of particular interest either in uh Diagnosis, uh, treatment, different mm -hmm. antibiotics, and so forth? Definitely. We have um, many institutions that are researching first on our, the sensitivity of our testing because there are a lot of bacteria that have been shown to not show up on the urine culture sometimes. So um, we're working on having better testing for bacteria in the urine, and we're also working on um, trying antibiotics that are uh, 
able to treat resistant infections, which has a, is a very um, con <laughs> constant struggle for us. So, so somebody in terms of the testing could could have an infection, and uh, I guess it's a urine test would would come back negative. It may, but, but it's, it's an it, anti, but it's a it's a bug that's not being tested for. It's it's less likely. I don't want to say that it's common, but there are some bacteria that may not show up in the urine culture, um, and still give you symptoms and, and signs of a urine infection. Um, your your practice, you also uh, specialize in, in surgery, mm -hmm. uh, pelvic uh, prolapse. Yes. Uh, tell tell me about that. I mean, how how much of your practice is in different areas? Uh, so my practice is um, probably thirty percent uh, prolapse, uh, in which we help women that have um, descents in the vagina and uterus. Uh, probably 50% incontinence, uh, your, both urinary and fecal incontinence, meaning that you leak when you don't want to go to the bathroom uh, or you, um, there's leaking of stool as well. And another, how much did I say? <laughs> 50 and 30. So the other 20% well, are... No, there's no math on this test. <laughs> okay. um, so the other 20% will be recurrent Patients with recurrent urinary tract infections, um, patients that have interstitial cystitis, which is a, a pain syndrome in the bladder, um, and other variety of things. In, in terms of the, the surgical work that you mm -hmm. do, how, how's that evolving? So there's a, kind of a pendulum, right? Uh, before there were no mesh and then everybody was mesh and now most people don't get a mesh for um, Prolapse, but we we are finding better and um, ways of treating prolapse with uh, with better surgeries and more long-lasting surgeries. Let's get one more phone call. Howard County. This is Kathy. Uh, Kathy, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering with the retention issue that the other man spoke about. Um, what does she think about catheterization a couple of times a day to? relieve the, the um, buildup. Thank you for the phone call. So there are um, a number of different ways to treat retention. Um, first and foremost is observation. If a patient does have retention but can um, reasonably, although not completely empty their bladder and they don't have a problem with urinary tract infections or other uh, complications of it, um, we can just observe. Um, the other two options would be a catheterizing um, a number of times a day. You would have to obviously consult with your physician and see what's um, appropriate. And then there's a, a nerve stimulator that we can implant to treat retention as well. Very good. Doctor, we appreciate your time. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.